Hello, and welcome to Cursed Content Club. I'm your host, Chris Wolfhart, and with me as always are my co-hosts, Dan and Bob Video Games from Gigaboots.com. I didn't prepare anything to say, Bob, you. I hope this guy's brother's though, all right? <laughs> Dr. Agro from Dr. Agro. Say chess and die. Again. <laughs> And for the first time, Dr. Orochi from twitch.tv slash Dr. Orochi. I cannot begin to tell you how thrilled and excited I am to be here today. <laughs> and you should be, because we're watching the classic available only at the Gigaboots Patreon, GB Podcast Network Patreon, patreon.com slash GB Podcast. Isolation 119. Woo! <laughs> oh, this will be my first time. Should I have watched the first 118, or is this... <laughs> no, those completely failed on Kickstarter. <laughs> I could only dream such a bounty of content existed for us. Unfortunately, we only have this one. I might be able to get the rights to make that show. <laughs> <laughs> it's the streaming series. Yeah, we have to do all 118 episodes. <laughs> right? <laughs> but, you, but you'd have to hire him to be the guy. <laughs> no, we recast him. That one effective for anyone, right? <laughs> Why would anyone yeah, care like who actors plays are the important. Big, No, no one cares about actors. No. <laughs> we'll do the Back to the Future solution. We'll hang the actor upside down <laughs> oh, and oh. assume they can't tell the difference now. Hmm. This might work. <laughs> only work sometimes that was not a joke by the way this movie isolation 119 is only available at the gb podcast patreon patreon.com slash gb podcast and if you contribute to get access to that movie you'll you'll also get access to the commentary track we're about to record for it. and two other commentary <laughs> tracks also of this movie <laughs> let me tell you i honestly can can tell you that it is worth watching with each commentary track <laughs> of course we get a blind person every time. Just to here you go. You've never experienced this nightmare movie. I mean, delightful. So Dan, yeah, yes, Chris? you've watched this many times. Mm -hmm. If I put a gun to your head, could you tell me the sequences that happen in what order they no. happen in? No, no, I don't stand a prayer uh, of a chance to do that. I know that there's chess. There are uh, really cheap candles. Yeah, and tea there's, lights. There's there's a lawn fight. Oh yeah, there is. Oh, I wasn't sold, but I'm sold now. <laughs> yeah, we can't give away too much. Doctor O is completely blind on this movie, and may still be completely blind once the credits on the movie roll. <laughs> yeah, but after <laughs> it's one of those. After the third watch, though. Right, that's when it clicks. Yes. It takes seven or eight watches for your brain to properly metabolize it. <laughs> Um, you know, normally we do like expectations before we, we go into the movie. Obviously, four of us have already seen it before, at least once at most, like nine times. <laughs> uh, Dr. O, you've seen the trailer, which was, I believe, up on Vimeo. Uh, do you have any expectations? I do, but I don't want to give it out right now because I could be setting myself up for failure. But coincidentally, <laughs> coincidentally, that is exactly what I'm hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is you're expecting the unexpected you hope to be uh your expectations to be defied if the trailer is anything to go by at all i genuinely am very much looking forward to how this plays out <laughs> that's great me too well let's go watch the movie yippee the music dan back isolation 119 as always is a movie that in many ways defies categorization <laughs> dr O, what did you think of isolation 119 it's very hard to pinpoint exactly how it made me feel but i'll try my best miserable <laughs> but other than that i felt like there was a genuine attempt at creating a piece of art that not only evokes emotion but brings forth a lot of questions about the duality of man and existence in and of itself and on all of those fronts i feel like it failed entirely <laughs> <laughs> 
but the visualizers, they were so cool. <laughs> and what do you give it on the patented cursed content scale of negative five to five? Well, to stay within the boundaries of the already established system, I'll give it a negative five. But on my personal scale, it would go way lower. <laughs> You need to watch more hideous travesties. <laughs> May I recommend a movie called The Golden Compass? <laughs> so. They didn't use any Winamp visualizers to talk about the metaphorical circumcision in that film. <laughs> Dan, what's your take on Isolation 119 round? <laughs> Nine? Question mark. <laughs> Isolation 119 is a movie that will always surprise you when you come back to it. You can't possibly retain the order of events because that would imply causality between the different things that happened in this film. They are merely a series of scenes that are contained within the runtime. It would be hubris for you to assume that at any point you would possibly master the order of events here. And as such, it is a surprise and a delight every time. And as you know, our good friends at the Gigaboots Podcast Network, Patreon, uh, they, they have only the best movies up over there, uh, exclusive rights. Uh, so I'm going to give it a five. It's, this is a great film. <laughs> of course. This is a great film. You should sign up $5 a month right now. Wow. Currently averaging out to zero. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Agro, you're, you, uh, other than Dr. O, you've seen this the fewest amount of times. It's true. This is only my second viewing of the film, and I was alarmed and somewhat elated to learn that the prophecy given to me by those deeper initiates was true. This second viewing was truly a transformative experience. <laughs> With the addition of context and foresight, every facet of this movie was altered in some way. Its meaning more clear and more manifold. Uh, this movie is fucking nuts and every frame of it drips with passion, far outstripping competence. <laughs> I give it a one. Bob. <laughs> As we watch more and more bad movies for the show, I start to appreciate this film more. I don't know how many times I've seen it now. It's, it's been way too many. <laughs> And yet there's always a scene I don't remember. It's impressive that way. Like, not even where it fits, it existing. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, you could say this is the uh, the Resident Evil 4 of movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could, I guess, yeah. <laughs> no one you can, can say fucking anything you, you want. Right? <laughs> uh, so I'm going to give it a two. <laughs> I'm, I demand the hook man cut. <laughs> What? Oh, shit. Like the Hookman for Resident Evil 4. Oh, my God. Yeah. I guess I have to go. Uh, you really think there's more at the end? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I kind of thought there would be more in general. Somehow there was less than I remembered. Yeah, there's not actually that much here, despite how much is here. <laughs> so it, 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 it's, like, uh, it's like you pull open your junk drawer, like, after eight years, and you're like, surely there must be some a couple things in here I want to keep, and you go through and, like, Oh, yeah, I'm literally <laughs> doing not. that right now as we're about to move. I'm like, wait, why do I have all this shit? Uh, I'm going to give it a zero <laughs> middle of the road. Wow. Does that mean this movie got wait? What'd you give it, Bob? A two. OK, it got a number. Great. Great. I'm, I'm not going to do that in my head. <laughs> Point six. <laughs> but, we're, but we're starting with the best character. And as our guest, Dr. O gets to go first before we strip mine this wasteland <laughs> right? and take every single conceivable thing. Well, since it's my first viewing, maybe if I'm ever honored enough to come back and do this again, it might change. But at the moment, it's a tie between Tina and the bat. Both brought a certain type of energy to the screen that just cannot be properly expressed in words. You have to experience it. Very true. <laughs> like the aluminum bat? 
Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. What you? Can't, oh, that's uh, a new one. That is advanced. <laughs> yeah, you can't say its performance is nearly as wooden as the main character. It's made of aluminum. That's true. Exactly. <laughs> it really you does have it. more screen presence than some of the humans. <laughs> Man, Doctor O picked up the rules of this game quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Agro. This time around, being able to view the the story and the film as a whole. I'm going to give it to Coma Brother, <laughs> who may or may not be in a coma, may or may not be spectral in nature, and may or may not have planned this whole thing for unknown reasons and unknowable gains. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, dude. I, I was here for four months. I don't have any money anymore. I don't know what you <laughs> thought you were getting from me. <laughs> and then his brother's like, wait, you quit your job? And he's like, dude, I've been here. <laughs> what job Dan um, you know each time a new thing stands out about the performance of our main character and this time the thing that's sticking with me the number one thing is the thing everyone everyone honed in on during the scene where the, the Mac is going insane where he holds the plug up to the back to go, see, I cut this. You you can't work anymore. There's just something unreal about that moment mm-hmm. in the performance because there's a body language to it. Right. You know, if done differently, that scene would come off as crazed or desperate. He literally looks like he's trying to pu- punish an animal. <laughs> like he's putting the Max nose into the mess it made. He's like, look, now this is happening. And then and then he hits it with a bat. I I honestly. So they, you think that that makes him the best? He's character? the best character. I'm not giving it to the the power plug. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or the scissors. They, that's not even a great pair of scissors. Like sure. I don't know. Maybe the same pair shows up later and has a really good scene. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that's a credit to them. <laughs> Bob, are you gonna pick the scissors? No. Is always. I feel like I need to pick the Komodo dragon. <laughs> <laughs> he brightens my day every time. <laughs> That's fair. I'm going to have to go with the lone shark who, God bless her, is trying. <laughs> mm-hmm. She doesn't really understand. She kind of, she obviously understands what she's saying. She doesn't really understand the point of this cigarette or what this, this uh, trope is, but she's doing what she's told. And nothing else. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. All really low-tier indie filmmakers would be so blessed to have an actress such as her. Mm -hmm. As there is light, so must there be darkness. So now we have to go to the worst character, and Dan gets to start there. Dan's like, they're all so good, though. (laughs) Yes, that is what I'm thinking. You nailed it. I'm going to have to go with Coma Brother. Coma, Coma Brother should be doing a lot more. <laughs> that opening, I don't understand the emotions he's going through. That ending, I also don't understand the emotions he's going through. He's in a big twist. That's I, the emotion. I just, I, I sit here and wonder what was his plan. <laughs> it, no. it just will never click for me what his emotional state is, so I cannot begin to decipher what his plan was. Maybe he didn't have a plan. <laughs> just a fun prank. <laughs> yeah, just a, just a prank. It would have been really good since he looks kind of like David Hayter if he had pulled the thing and been like, kept you waiting, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> and then he would light a cigarette and then awkwardly drop it. <laughs> <laughs> and then there would be two hymns. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. O. Well, interestingly enough, I feel like this also has to go to Tina. A character that had the closest thing to an arc out of the entirety of the film. But at the same time, it was so brief and not properly resolved. So I feel like it's a little lacking. It's true. Yeah, that's very true. Tina is usually my highlight to this film. (laughs) The the more viewings go on, the more I go, this movie should have been more Tina and had a conclusion for Tina. So you're totally right. I mean, for just a brief moment watching this film, I actually felt something close to joy. (laughs) And then it was ripped away from me. It literally drove off. (laughs) 
out of the film. <laughs> Just gone. Yeah, that tracks. Oh, God, I have to... Oh, no, I don't. Aggro's next. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, I'm going to complete this circuit with Dan. Uh, Jack White, international man of no mystery, is <laughs> just off-putting in every degree. His weird square head constantly filling the frame hey, as he struggles on. to grasp or is- express a human emotion. He's like come Patrick on. Bateman with no charisma. <laughs> His complete refusal to do anything that makes sense or react in a way recognizable as a fellow human <laughs> is this film's sole source of tension and drama. <laughs> yeah, that's why he's the best character. <laughs> it's awful. Ugh. It's like having a piece of loose carpet in my mouth at all times. <laughs> oh, what a, what a, what an analogy. I guess I'll go next. Um... I'm going to give it to his wife. She's the worst character because she left him and forced us to endure this movie. <laughs> How dare she? She just be more reasonable and stay with him. Yeah, she's not being logical. She needs to be more objective about this. Yeah, he this. took it back. <laughs> yeah, you took it back. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Bob. Uh, I'm going to choose Maynock. She was hyped up as this super demon. Uh-huh. And then has to use a pair of scissors and can't even defeat this British man. <laughs> I thought it was all going to tie back around and she was also going to give Jack the Carradine special. <laughs> right? <laughs> Imagine writing some sort of hook or arc to the to the shawl or hanging or anything. Yeah, no. Of course not. It's like, well, well how was you going to kill her? The fucking, you blurted out the first thing you thought. Scissors. Just grab some scissors. She's got spooky fucking... hair. Used to, she uses it to use scissors. Couldn't she use it to choke him? And I don't know. Something? Why would she do that? That takes longer than scissors. <laughs> well, scissors didn't seem to work that well, so maybe not. <laughs> well, now we got to move on to the best scene. I'll start us off. Uh, him leaving the airport, because they really, they really tried with that camera shot on the exhaust pipe of the car. <laughs> that's something you that's something that was mildly difficult to do and you'd, you'd assume that a, an, an indie filmmaker would just wouldn't do it but he did it it's he, delightful it, it circumvented my expectations it's one of the few moments in the film where you could say he did it <laughs> <laughs> that's true bob i'm gonna give it to the cooking scene we get a lot of good <laughs> composition and, and shots of him sharpening knives maybe too much my, my, I already forgot. I already forgot about the cookies. Yeah, scene. why is it here? It's, <laughs> it is the most pointless scene in this movie, I think, which is <laughs> impressive. Yeah, it doesn't. But, you, you know, Bob, I remember it from last time. I think it was my least favorite scene. But you guys are right. Once you've seen the movie, that scene is great. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. O. Any scene that features the Microsoft Sam voice elevated the entire film, so... I have to give it. I know that's like a good rough 20% of the film, but I was elated. I mean, of all the artistic choices that could have been made, that was my favorite one. Fair. You know? Pretty valid. Dan. We're doing best scene, of course. Yeah. So it's hard to choose which of Tina's scenes are better. I'm going to have to go with prematurely wrinkly hand for main character outdoors raining quotation marks uh brawl because <laughs> that's the moment you feel like this movie can do anything <laughs> because yeah. what is a good idea and what they can accomplish well will not stop them <laughs> <laughs> that movie could go com- true it really could go to a completely different place from there Anything is possible within that scene. He could end up on the moon. And in fact, the ne- the next Tina scene actually builds pretty well on that, right? But then the whole movie just kind of de-escalates and ends abruptly shortly thereafter. <laughs> yeah, man. I do want to give a special shout out to Whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> just like the credits. <laughs> the credits gave a shout out. They were like special thanks to Whiskey and Soda. I'm like, what the fuck? Keeps you sane. I don't know. Maybe that was the name of the dog. 
Maybe. Yes, it's the name of the dog. Oh. Yeah, come on, man. Pay attention. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll catch it on the You're next gonna have to watch. Yeah, <laughs> the next seven or eight. Aggro. Best scene. One hundred percent for me on this run through was when he pulled up with that dog. He opened the car door and I realized because up to that point, I've been thinking, you know, I pretty much remember every shot in this movie. This is I'm doing pretty all right here. What do you mean there's a dog in this film? I absolutely do not remember there being a dog at all. And I realized that, you know, there's never going to be a time when I watch this movie and remember everything. This this book made of finite pages, but in infinite variations. <laughs> yeah, it's like a movie you can watch in an infinite amount of times. And there's always going to be something new because you cannot hold the entirety of it in your brain at once. No, you really can't. We, we, we've endured so much AI shit, but all they had to do was make Isolation 119, the infinite movie. <laughs> <laughs> now we guess, I guess we got to go to worst scene. Bob. Um, all right. It's a scene close to the scene you were talking about for your best scene, Chris, at the airport. But it's when he he gets the rental car. And we have four or five different shots of him pulling out of the parking lot. Because that scene always makes me think we are going to watch Birdemic. Uh-huh. And that's uh. a truly horrifying state of mind. Yeah, it is. Yeah, this is a much better film than Birdemic. Yeah. Same time, you got to admire Birdemic's ability to just go and film in a bunch of different places instead of one house in Thailand. No, I don't. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'll take that back. Cursed Content Club Birdemic win. I ask myself that a lot. I guess I better go. The, the, the scene where Maynock's human form kills herself, it's such a... You couldn't come up with any other way for her to kill herself. I get that you accidentally wrote it as being in the past, but not that far in the past, so you didn't want to use a gun. <laughs> but you could, you could have, you could have done something else. You love those VFX blood effects. You couldn't do something with that. You can't, you can't do. She strangled herself with a shawl in a way that I'm not even sure would work. <laughs> yeah, it feels like the shawl would just tear before she actually like strangled to death there. Mm. Maybe it's made of, like, aramid fibers. <laughs> <laughs> Aggro. I'm going to go for uh, another quick scene that I had forgotten. Uh, when he just sort of, he goes to investigate a weird rumbling noise from behind the door that isn't sharp enough to really be banging. Uh, and then the door takes his fingernail off and we get this really, really weird VFX overlay of a blood spurt coming out of his thumb before he pulls his fingernail away. Yeah. It might be the most involved practical effects shot uh, outside of him shooting the loan shark. <laughs> and it's just kind of yeah, ooky. That... Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Dr. O. I would have to say the tinnitus checks. <laughs> 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 it was the only time watching the film that I actually felt anger. Which, I have to give credit, it made me feel an emotion, unlike the rest of the film, but still wasn't pleasant. It took me out of the experience. How dare they? <laughs> I want to just be bored for a 50 minutes trace. <laughs> Bob, please, 74. Oh, excuse me. Dan, you got to take us home. Uh, this is really easy, but I also need to preempt this with something. Uh mild preamble here um so having seen it this many times you know you're in a different state every time you watch it and your understanding and ability to retain the movie is different every time you watch it it's been years of me watching this movie now and i feel like past me overhyped the dance sequence with tina yeah with the hacksaw it was not nearly as funny this time to me and that's probably on me but i'm still gonna nominate it for worst scene it could be way funnier yeah, it is just a weak version of what that could have been. Right. He's doing a, like the same dance move every time. And it's safe. Yeah. Like he isn't moving the hacksaw a ton because, mm -hmm. and this is my assumption, she is lying down there as he does that. Even though she doesn't need to, the camera's not going to show it. Yeah. So I've been he's afraid of moving it a bunch. <laughs> I've, been, I've been on enough indie films that to think that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I've been in multiple shoots I wasn't in charge of to watch as they just go, no, it's important that they lie off camera as you do the stupid thing above them. 
I'm like, no, it isn't. You have to keep the actors engaged. Right? You can't <laughs> pretend there's a person beneath you off camera. That would be like acting someone was there. Well, considering the actors they probably got for those productions, maybe they were right. <laughs> <laughs> you, that's when you put the square tape on the ground. You just get, you know, <laughs> your blue painter's tape and you just go there. That's that woman's face. <laughs> You got to make sure they're looking at the same spot every time. Because if you don't do that, they will not look at the same spot every time. And, and what if they're like, there's nothing there. It's just tape. <laughs> they're like, I don't fucking get it. Why am I looking at tape in this scene? <laughs> Whatever. You always have the same expression on anyway. Just go. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Your ass can't even fucking think, let alone act. I'm going to hit record. Say the line. Well, those were our segments. Any, any wrapping up thoughts for Isolation 119, especially from Dr. O, our guest? I just want to say thank you for asking me to be a part of this. Despite the fact that the film may have not been my favorite of all time, the experience, on the other hand, was truly a delight. <laughs> and I hope to do this again with you sometime in the future. So thank you for bringing me on. I do appreciate it. Oh, yeah, it was great. I'm glad uh, we could just, you know, drag drag you through the mud. <laughs> as we all do every once in a while. And just strap up to the back of a Jeep and drive, drive it through a fucking swamp. Mm -hmm. That is the film Isolation 119. <laughs> I don't know why my desire to see more extended universe Isolation 119 content is so strong this time. But my brain's like, you could just make a whole cinematic universe. <laughs> It's the streaming show. It's only available through our Patreon. <laughs> oh, man. This is a fucking bottle episode this week. Isn't every episode <laughs> a bottle episode? They've been in the same fucking room for a season. <laughs> all, we, all you got to do is show, is show Isolation 119 men surfing for a second at the end of the season. <laughs> yes. They're just confused. They're like, was there... A a thing about him surfing in that movie? I don't remember that. <laughs> we could have a whole we could have a whole season about the true origin of Maynock. Ah! I mean, it did clearly happen pretty recently, so we can tell that story. <laughs> that shit was like 2012. It wasn't even like the 80s. No. Anybody have anything else? Nah, I think that's it. Well, thank you for listening to Cursed Content Club. We'll see you in one to three years when we decide to inflict this movie on another new person. The executive producers for this Gig Boots video are Esme, Ely Broyles, Spaceman Spiff, Red Blaze 27, Brendan O'Sullivan, A Reminder for Symphony of War, Cooper Tank, Very Best Plot, Iconic Bane, and Rado. Thank you very much to our executive producers and also these guys. If you want to become an executive producer or normal patron, head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today. <laughs> <laughs>